Hello, welcome back to the Matt Pfeiffer Experience. I am your host, Matthew Pfeiffer. I have on a very special guest. His name is Anwar White out of Montreal, Canada. Cannot wait for you guys to listen to his advice when it comes to online dating. I've gotten in touch with him through TikTok and his dating tips are spot on, in particular for women of color. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get this show started. Welcome back. And so let me introduce to you my guest. My guest is Anwar White. Anwar is a, a dating and relationship coach for smart women of color. 90% of, his, of women who work with him find themselves in successful long-term relationships within six months. Anwar's work has been featured on USA Today, The Today Show, CBS, and Fox, to name a few. With all that being said, Anwar, welcome to the Matt Pfeiffer Experience. It is a pleasure to have you on. You are doing absolutely amazing work. I love your work on TikTok. Your advice is always spot on. And so tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into this? Yes, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm ex so excited to be here and to talk shop with you. It's always good to talk with other um, uh, people in the industry who are helping people do this sort of work. I think it's so important. Um, in terms of how I got into this, I have really been doing this all of my life. I have been helping the boys talk to the girls and the girls talk to the boys, even in elementary school. Um, so that is, you know, when people talk about passions and what you're kind of meant uh, to do on this earth, this is it for me. Um, so how I really got very serious in this, besides just helping my homegirls like <laughs> work on their relationships, is, you know, I got my MBA and one of the things that I found was after we graduated, I would touch base with all of my girlfriends and they would have the amazing jobs and They'd be traveling like crazy and great cars, great homes, but their love lives were a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so me being the type A person that I am, I'm like, okay, girl, I'm just going to have to solve this for you. This is ridiculous. You're amazing. So let's like mm -hmm. just make this happen. And so I would literally take over their, their online profiles and help them talk to guys. And before I knew it, they were in relationships within two to three months. And then after time went on, they would be getting married within two years. And so I was like, yeah, I'm enjoying this much more than working in corporate. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to lean into this. And that's exactly what I did. And I've been doing this for the past 12 years. I got certified as a relationship coach, I want to say about eight years ago. Um, but I've been having my business where I work with you know, primarily women of color, black and brown women, because mm -hmm. those those challenges are quite unique. But I have I work with all women uh, if they want to work with me. Do you have do you have, um, do any men happen to gravitate towards you? I mean, obviously, I know that I have. I don't know if it's because I'm also in the industry, or uh, have you had men just happen to reach out to you, or comment, or follow, or what has that been like? Yes, most definitely. So a lot of gay men want to work with me. There are some um, straight men that want to work with me. Unfortunately, I tell them that I, I really do prefer working with women. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But I do get a lot of commentary from men, most of them not liking what I'm saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I think is sometimes a good thing. <laughs> do you think it's, it, is it because they, because it's making their life more difficult? Or is it the men who um, you're trying to steer um, our ladies away from, um, what you know, what what type of pushback are you typically getting? Because I, I like when I listen to your work, I, I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. And I know men who follow me who are more emotionally intelligent. I know for a fact they wouldn't have a problem with it either. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, there. Not everyone is emotionally intelligent. Right. And, you know, when we do this work, my work is really centering and empowering women, which means that they are on a pedestal, which means yeah. that everyone else is not. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes there are men that have an issue with that, which is totally fine. Um, you know, I think it's important to understand that the dating game has changed and men have had such a powerful influence in the ways mm -hmm. in which dating has occurred um, because of numbers, because of power, because of financial um, kind of 
influence. Yeah. Uh, but now those things are changing. And, you know, a lot of women don't need a man to survive. I mean, in the 70s, women actually needed a man to even open a bank account. Yeah. That's not the case now. So it means that power has shifted. And oftentimes when I'm talking and, you know, letting women know that that power has shifted in dating and in relationships, it can be triggering for a lot of men mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes they think that an empowered woman means a disempowered man. And that's not mm -hmm. necessarily the case. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell me a little bit more about social media. You've been doing this for a long time. What has what have you noticed or have you or has there been any changes in terms of dating um, or at least your profession when it comes to social media? Because uh, like you said, you've been doing this since you were in elementary school. Uh, ha once you started to post online, in particular on TikTok, as things go viral consistently, there's a lot of trolls. There's a lot of um, has that helped or has that hurt your your calling, so to speak? It has totally helped it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think social media is amazing and specifically TikTok. It's so educational. And this is what I hear, like when I do con consultations with women, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, yeah, I found you. And like, I'm just learning so much about relationships because here's the thing. No one teaches us how to date. <laughs> no, I agree 100%. No we learn, we learn from Your movies. Mom doesn't sit down yeah. and say, okay. I mean, what, what moms usually say is, don't get pregnant, wear yeah. a condom, and uh, don't be fast. <laughs> yeah. This is for women. For men, mm -hmm. it's also probably like, wear a condom and don't get anyone pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no one teaches us how to date. And so what I've seen is a much more educated individual in the dating scene who is familiar with things like toxic patterns, red flags, yeah. narcissistic behavior. I mean, that word wasn't even in our vocabularies, no. I want to say, five seven years ago mm -hmm. but no. now people are starting to understand it in such a significant way that it makes um the people's experiences and dating um not i don't want to say easier but with clear eyes mm -hmm. right they're able to see patterns and they're able to overall like date better because of it because if you don't know what you're doing it, it's it can be a war out there and if you go into the war without equipment protection yeah. weapons you're yeah. going to get slaughtered and that's what so many people were doing but i think that social media has been able to at least give people some knowledge strategy protection and weapons uh, uh, you know i i agree with you 100 percent that there's a lot of there's a lot of great to it uh, a lot of good things in terms of social media um, and you have some amazing coaches like yourself and, you know, and other people that, that we've had on. Have you run into people who or have you seen other coaches that have put out some bad content or have you experienced some of your clients that may have taken in a lot of that bad content? And uh, what have what have what guidance have you given them or what are some tips that you might be able to share that maybe they're listening to someone that they might that might not be beneficial to them or a dating coach who might be toxic because there's there's a lot of that too 100 percent. i'm glad that you actually mentioned this because you know in life it's 50 50 there's great and there's not mm -hmm. so great right and um what i think is important what i think is overwhelming about social media and the internet is that there's so many different ideas and perspectives and a lot of those can actually contradict each other and it can yeah. actually make you more confused than when you started um, and so one of the things that I tell so many people that I talk to is um, follow two to three people yeah don't don't follow 20 different coaches yeah <laughs> and the reason I say that is because ultimately when you do it's bound for a contradiction and you're you're not gonna know if you're coming or going yeah. Right. And so I think that's really confusing. Uh, the other thing that I would say is I think that sometimes uh, there are some coaches out there that will prey on someone's trauma. Mm -hmm. And because of that, whether you had a, uh, a very critical mother or father, and so you have some of these dating coaches that are being critical of you and yelling at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it like, 
even though intellectually it might not feel good emotionally, because of our past lived experiences and trauma, we will lean into that because yeah. that is how we've created our definition of someone taking care of us or someone loving us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to get really clear on that. And if you have that sort of visceral reaction in the same way that you did when your mom and dad was criticizing you, yeah. um, you'll want to step away from that because that means danger. So many people, when they listen to my content, they're saying, you're so gentle, you're so nurturing. Because I think, I, I think that's my nature, but I also think like, when they're benchmarking that with some of their dating coaches who are yelling at them and like, yeah. you know, telling them, stop, you're an idiot, don't do this, right? That um, the contrast is so, um, so, so vast. So I, that's I think what that, I think about that. I think that there's, there's also the other side of it where you have some dating coaches that are also pandering as well, that tell you everything that you want to hear with no challenge. Um, and I, I think that that even when I hear hear you, there's times where we have to um, really challenge people's core belief, core belief system, knowing that sometimes they might have they may have been conditioned in certain ways that that are kind of creating self sabotaging or limiting beliefs. Um, and I and um, you know I don't know if it's something that you've seen. I know I've seen a lot of pandering where people are just telling people what they want to hear because it increases numbers and increases followings, it increases the likelihood of brand deals and this and that. And uh, have you seen a lot of that on the on the opposite side as well? Well, here's what I will say about that. I think that there are a lot of people that make a like say a lot of different um, meme worthy quotes, but mm -hmm. actually don't have a lot of depth to them. And so I one of the things 100%. that I appreciate about your content and what I try to do with mine is to go that extra level deeper, right? To really help, help the individuals out there that really need an understanding around why we do what we do and, and how and, and all of that. Because I know that when we have that clarity, that um, the confidence in this area of their lives can just skyrocket. So, um, you know, there are a lot of people that are doing a lot of great things that mm -hmm. will do great numbers, but ultimately, you know, if the intention is about helping and getting clarity, I'm all for it. There are some people that are doing that. There are other, people's that, the other people that are not. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to women of color, and online dating, why are so many women of color struggling in the online dating scene? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, number one, um, it, there's still a little bit of a stigma there. <laughs> With online more dating, so, you mean? Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit more than their white counterparts. And yeah. so, you know, a lot of people aren't as apt to say, oh yeah, girl, I, I met my guy online. Right? Mm -hmm. it, for some reason, there's still this romanticized process and, and thought process around, you know, we met at, you know, this networking event or whatever it may be that that, ha that story is better than meeting someone online. And so mm -hmm. there's a little bit of that going on. So there are not as many, um, you know, women of color that are actually going online that they need to. The second thing that I would say is, you know, there are a lot of women online that, um, well, first of all, there is dating racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's yep. be really clear about that. Yep, I, uh, I've had I've had a lot of clients that run into that as well. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. Um, when we're not telling the truth about that, we're lying. So, you know when a woman reaches out to a man, a, bl a black woman, let's just say, mm -hmm. her potential response rate is in the 30s. Oh, wow. When a white woman does that, her response rate is in the 50s. Wow. Right? Yeah, in the high 40s, low 50s. Mm -hmm. So understand and know that just the actual everyday of communication, the experience is more difficult and harder for them because they're not getting as many conversations and as many hits. And so what that means is that it starts to become a, a more confusing, more exhausting, more frustrating experience for them, which will enable them to do this, what I call start and stop, right? Where you, you're you on for a couple of weeks and then you stop for two or three months and then you go on for a couple of weeks because you're lonely and then you come back on. That kills your dating momentum and kills your results because of it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
I like to think of myself as an amazing dating coach, but half of the battle is actually just consistently online dating. I, I <laughs> call three, people, I, three yeah, people, who, more. people who I, uh, I work with, I call it, you, you got to participate. You got to participate in life and you got to, you got to be there. You got to show up, uh, it, which kind of leads me to, to my next question. Um, one of the things, so a lot of people who follow me uh, are coming out of a toxic or traumatic relationship. And one, and I've been known for telling people that I'm not big on online dating, but the reason there's a reason why it's not so much that I have, I'm against people going online, but a lot of people who are coming out of a toxic relationship tend to isolate themselves. And this is their only interaction with people whatsoever. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I have you on, and one of the things I love about your content is that you teach people strategy. It's not just let's just get online and you're you're also really about people also having a life outside of online dating which I'm 100% in support of support of um, can you talk about can you talk to maybe that person who just is isolating themselves and like this is their only interaction with people in general or um, they find themselves not talking to people uh, at work or coworkers or with their friends and um, are there any potential dangers to that or what, what, what would you tell people who are in those type of situations? Yeah, I hear what you're saying and I totally understand that. Um, one of the things that I do for my clients when they start on, with my program is we get them online immediately. Mm -hmm. What I've learned over the past couple of years is yes, people are going through breakups and narcissistic relationships, but also we have a pandemic and people yeah. are actually just not going out as much as they used to. And so I actually think that online dating is that great first next step to at least start having conversations. Now mm -hmm. it's about like how we move from that is, which will show and, and, sh and let you know exactly like how you can progress. But I actually think that it's a great first step. And I think it's a great step because they're at home watching Netflix and HBO Max anyway, right? So they can yeah. be doing this and engaging them in this. And with more time, they can have a sense of comfort and safety in doing this because part of getting out of that sort of experience is, am I safe? Mm -hmm. Am I confident? Do guys think that I'm attractive? And mm -hmm. being able to have that experience online, um, first and foremost, will even though it sounds very superficial, can help that level of confidence. And so I think it's actually a, a really great first step, but it doesn't necessarily need to be your 10th step. You yeah, um, In terms of strategies and, and, and meeting people online, I think, you know, I think a, a hybrid approach is really important. I think that online and offline is great. Online because the numbers are there. Yeah. Right? I, I would love, I love that you have thousands of people at your fingertips. Yeah. Here's what I know. And I've seen, I've had my clients who have been very analytically minded actually monitor this. 97% of the people that you talk to, you probably won't have more than a third date with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can go to an Apple store or a bar where there's 50 or 100 men, um, but it doesn't necessarily, or women, depending yeah. on who you are and what you like, um, but it doesn't necessarily it won't give you the results that maybe an online um, experience would do. So mm -hmm. I, that's why I think it's also like really helpful. Um, in terms of offline, I think it's like so important to be able to just live your life, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're coming from a, a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I tell so many of my clients is one, I want you to lean into your tribe because leaving those sorts of relationships will create voids or holes in your life that need to be filled up either with new experiences or new people because that's how we heal. Absolutely. Um, secondly, I think it's important to have these like mini goals and, and really lean into your passions and hobbies um, and like have a goal and knock it out of the park, whether it's working out twice a week for a month or whatever, whatever it may be. I always tell my clients that like, I want you to do what you love and what lights you up because when you're doing that and you meet people at that version of yourself, they're going to see the best of you and they're going to actually, it's going to be like, you know, very attractive and like a magnet because you'll be at a certain level that maybe you're not at, 
on an everyday basis, right? Okay. Whether that's volunteering, whether that's playing co-ed softball, whether that's hiking or a book club, whatever it may be, to lean into those activities um, to help you find yourself and the core individual of who you are. And, yeah. you know, that's the case. I, I, I work with women specifically, and I think it's so important for women to do this because it's very easy to lose yourself in this society as a woman. And I think, you know, as someone who has a daughter who's nine right now, especially the ages of seven and 12 is when that starts. And so, you know, I am always telling them, we got to get back to that, that seven to 12 year old, right. Mm -hmm. And find those things that you actually absolutely love because at that point you were doing cartwheels, you were jumping on random rocks, you were picking up insects. Like we got to get back to that courageous, no fear. Yeah. I always tell people that when we talk about healing the inner child, it doesn't always have to be this heavy work talking about trauma. A lot of times it is doing the cartwheels and doing the, the fun things and riding the bike again and, um, you know, singing karaoke or, what, or whatever it is that you did when you were 7 to 12, like you just mentioned. Uh, one, one thing, when I, I saw a recent study that interracial dating mainly because of online dating has increased over over the years and uh, so and that's something that a lot of women of color at times might hesitate to do what are your thoughts and what what's been your experience and and with women who might have that hesitation should they have that hesitation you know if they were to consider stepping outside their culture or have a have a person connect with them or maybe they find someone who is attractive but they're worried about how that person is going to be receptive of them or the family or whatever the case is yeah that's a great question so um i was a statistics major in undergrad so i, I always look into the numbers and then i look deeper into the numbers and so um you're right overall interracial dating is um kind of increasing the rate is increasing but it's increasing for everyone except for black women <laughs> mm. Everyone else is, is dating uh, like outside of their race except for black women. I think it's like 12% versus black men, that's 24%. Um, and so what I would say to that is there's a lot of, well, one, they don't think that, you know, different kinds of men actually want them. Uh, and so I actually just did a video that has gone semi-viral about the fact that that's not actually true. And they get this sense because, you know, in high school and in college, these little boys that were more focused on being a part of their friend tribe versus going out and actually sharing their feelings about a certain girl, um, they think that that is the experience that they will have it as, a, as an adult. And that's not necessarily the truth. And I mean, if you go on TikTok or social media, you'll see a ton of interracial couples sharing their lives. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, you're right. Online dating does overall increase um, interracial dating because the barrier is is not as great right that i can send you a message and there's not a lot of risk there and so right. people are actually reaching out to people that they wouldn't necessarily do in real life and i think mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing Absolutely. um what i would say though is i think it's really important to date everybody it's actually one of the things that i do in my program for the first month and my clients hate me for it because um i'm telling them that they actually have to funnel everybody and just have the experience of engaging with different kinds of people because oftentimes our type really isn't our type and for the women that actually get their guy in my program and most of them do i ask them hey is this your type and most of the time like 98 percent of the time they'll say no yeah because it's important to keep an open mind here it's important to open our net here it's important to have a level be in acceptance mode versus judgment mode because it doesn't matter what it looks like it matters what it feels like and that's yeah. what we need to be focusing on this is the message that i that i share with women um and you know it's the same for men as well um i would just share with men that you know if you are intimidated <laughs> because of, you know the way that uh, society has conditioned men that they will have to pursue. And uh, if you are intimidated by women that are a different race of you or culture, um, realize that they like you as much as you like them. So mm -hmm. give it a try. And um, 
We'll see. Yeah. What would you say are three tips that people need to know before they start online dating, or maybe they're currently online dating that that maybe they need to to consider whether it be their bio, whether it be the way they connect to people. What are three three tips that you tend to tend to find yourself regurgitating and repeating pretty consistently? Yeah, um, I love online dating, but online dating is not the be all end all. Mm -hmm. And people think that if I do that, I'm going to get my person and that's it. Online dating is a tool, a tool just like dating in general. And I think it's important for people to use it as such that dating and online dating is a tool for you to get to know yourself better. Um, for you to understand what triggers you, <laughs> um, what you like, what you don't like. And so the focus should really be on that versus getting the dates because you can lower your standards tomorrow and get a ton of dates. That's not what this is about. This is about becoming the woman or the man that is ready for the best relationship of their lives. And so I would just, you know, really focus on understanding that this is not the be all end all and it's a tool. That's mm -hmm. number one overall. Um, number two, I would say, like I was mentioning before, 97% um, of the people that you meet are not going to be your one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's important, and I say this not to discourage people from online dating, but to get really clear and to manage expectations about this, right? Because so many people are taking people not reaching out to them not responding ghosting personally and it's not mm -hmm. it's part of the online and the dating game yeah and so it's not about you <laughs> so and we, we forget that people we, we forget that people dating. are yeah we forget that people are also healing from their trauma and i always tell people that people treat you not based on what you deserve or who you are but who they are and that's that's 100 mm -hmm. yeah so i just think it's a it's a really important thing to do because if you are getting triggered by every little thing everybody does you're not going to be dating for a long time and you're never going to get your person right. so um that's the other thing and then thirdly i would just say that um and this actually goes along to your point that these people get to show up however they want to show up. Yeah. Our job is not to try to make them into something or to control them. Our job is just to kind of observe and accept how they're showing up and, and check in with ourselves and figure out how that feels for us and, mm -hmm. and move accordingly. So, so, so often, um, you know, I see people trying to, they'll meet someone online and they'll try to make them into something. Yeah. I hope that you realize when you're online that you're only knowing three to five percent of this person you don't know these people <laughs> i think that, that the research says that to make a really good friend you need about 200 hours of being yeah. with them and exposure to them so don't play yourself into thinking that you know these people when you don't and when you have that mindset of i'm getting to know this person versus i know them uh, it will help you just have perspective so much when it comes to online dating yeah now, there's a ton of tips in terms of profiles and pics and things like that, but I wanted to give kind of overall messages that I think are super important as you navigate your online dating life. I agree. I agree 100%. What, what would you say are some misconceptions when it comes to online dating? That everybody is a stalker or a perv or a harasser. Very true. And that only the... the, the, <laughs> the lowest of the low are online mm -hmm. dating. During the pandemic, everybody was online dating. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't have a choice. Everybody was yeah. on there. So, mm -hmm. and now the percentage of people who are dating that are online dating is much more than it, than it was before the pandemic. So mm -hmm. it's definitely not the truth. Um, and I spoke about this earlier, but I think there's a misconception that I'm definitely going to find my person online. Yeah. There are no guarantees in life and, right. and especially online dating. That's not, that's not a guarantee for you. So just realize that it's a tool, um, but we should also be offline dating. Absolutely. Um, another misconception about online dating I would just share is um, that 
you should be on all of the apps that that's actually going to I hear that a lot. A lot of times I hear people ask, which app can I find a great guy on or which app can I find a great woman on? And I'll tell people any of them. Like, give yourself an That's opportunity. Right. You need more at bats. You need, you know, well, where can I? It's not so much about where. It's just about putting yourself in, um, you know, giving yourself an opportunity. Uh, so when I talk to people about dating um, offline, I tell them to sign up for hobbies and activities that they enjoy to give yourself an opportunity. Sign up for some classes. Um, going back to what we were talking about with childhood, if you enjoyed softball and baseball you know sign up for a couple of co-ed leagues and get involved in some activities and and to put yourself in in the atmosphere where you can where you can talk and have communication give yourself opportunities and so i agree 100 percent if you are going to do if you are going to online date it's not so much about where but giving yourself more and more opportunities 100 percent, 100 percent. i think it's really important to maybe just stay on two online uh, dating apps or platforms, nothing more than that. Like we were talking about before, um, when you're hearing a lot of different advice, it can be overwhelming. And so getting yeah. on so many dating apps can also be super overwhelming, which can burn you out and actually give you a higher propensity to stop dating. Mm -hmm. And again, the key of all of this is being consistent because it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, I am going to transition us over to our uh, Reddit read. Uh, I like to do this with guests. We've been doing it for the last couple of episodes. People have really been enjoying it. And so this one is uh, titled Dating Emotionally Unavailable Men. And I'm sure that you've run into this with your clients a lot. I know I run into it. People talk about it all over social media about how they meet people. They have an avoidant attachment style. They're unavailable emotionally. And so this read says, uh, once again, treated like dirt and ghosted by a guy. I question why and is it me? But ultimately, I keep going for guys who give me, who give nothing and I give everything I have, ending up heartbroken. Why do I date these, un why do I date these unavailable guys? It's like I'm torturing myself. What are your thoughts on that? And have you heard similar situations from clients that you have? And if someone said something similar to this, what would you advise to them? Yes, I hear this literally every day. A <laughs> um, couple of things here. Women giving everything to men is a boundary violation. You're doing too much and you're doing too much because you think that you have to do to be loved. And, you know, we do that. And this is specifically important for women of color because so many of their mothers and grandmothers were living in their masculine energy where they had to do everything. You don't have to do anything to be loved. So I would just start by, by stating that because that's really important. You just have to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a boundary violation and we need to learn how to kind of sit comfortably in our feminine energy if we're looking for a man to do for us and be in his masculine energy. In terms of the emotional unavailability, I think it's really important to understand that it's a pattern because you have probably created that bonding pattern when you were growing up. So, um, you know, so often um, it is our fathers that aren't as emotionally available. Um, but, you know, surprisingly, if you're a high achieving individual, a lot of that comes from our mothers, especially if they're in their masculine energy. So this is really about your relationship to the masculine energy. Um, when you don't feel comfortable or you've been programmed that I can't share my feelings with individual because no one cares and no one's going to do anything about it, you will numb yourself and you will, you will put that those feelings deep, deep inside of yourself where you're not able to access them. And when you're not able to access them, you will actually lean into individuals that don't require you to access them. 
which are the unavailable, emotionally unavailable men. Um, so it's a pattern. So part of this work is healing your inner child. And also part of this work is in the present term, practicing being vulnerable from a feelings perspective so that, and that's with friends, that's with family, that's even at work so that when you engage in your adult romantic relationships, you feel more confident doing that. And there's sometimes there's a fear here. I just want to really quickly say about, I don't want to be vulnerable because I don't want them taking advantage of me mm -hmm. or I don't want them, you know, using me because of that. Vulnerability is a superpower in our relationships. It's the, it's the ability to deeply connect with individuals. Sometimes people conflate and confuse boundaries with vulnerability. It's your boundaries that protect you. And so if your boundaries are not strong, yes, there's an opportunity to be taken advantage of and disrespected. So again, vulnerability and boundaries and healing those inner child wounds are going to be super critical here to be able to thrive in your love life. And Mara, this has been absolutely amazing. We're definitely going to have to do this, uh, do this again because I feel like I could talk to you all day. You are such a wealth of knowledge. Um, so for those of you who are listening, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you guys go down to the comment section down below and make sure you uh, leave Anwar a comment and thank him for being on and also maybe some takeaways that you may have taken away from the show. Uh, also, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure you guys give us a follow. We would love for you guys to give us a review. And Anwar, Anwar I'm going to toss back over to you. And uh, if you could let people know where they can find you at if they want to follow your work if they want to get in contact with you for consultations, uh, we'll have your, your information also in the show notes. But uh, if, if people are listening and just want to hop on their phone and gravitate over to you, where can they find you at? Yeah, my website is called getyourguycoaching.com. On that, on that homepage, you can book a consultation. There's a free training on that homepage. That is one way that you can get in contact with me. And then secondly, you can always find me on TikTok at Dating Coach Anwar. I don't know how you got that domain, but you got lucky. So that, that's absolutely well, my amazing. name's Anwar, so nobody, nobody's really oh, no, no, that. The, 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 don the domain, um, get your guy, get your guy dot, dot com or how to get your guy dot com. I'm surprised that wasn't taken. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. definitely. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. We will have to do it again. For those of you who are watching, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it. And we will talk again soon.